let's talk about the four acts and how does that, what does that look like? And here's some thoughts from another writer that I enjoy reading. In act one, your hero is an orphan of some sort. It's symbolic. So who is that? Who is your main character? In act two, they're a wanderer of some sort. What is he or she trying to accomplish? In act three, they're a warrior. What's trying to stop them? And in act four, they're a martyr. What happens if the hero or the antagonist, what happens if they fail? You might like that better. You might like an act four structure better. The because method was something that I had discussed earlier at the very beginning of our talks. And that is telling a story where this happened, this inciting incident happened, the call to the journey. And I'll go ahead, I'm gonna talk about this later, but let's go ahead and, and bring this up now. The inciting incident would be uh, Rocky finds out that Creed is challenging a common townsperson to an exhibition match. That's the inciting incident. Indiana Jones gets a phone call that the mummy has been stolen from the museum in Cairo. What is he gonna do? That's the inciting incident. So after your inciting incident, that happens, right? Because that happened, this happened. Because that happened, this happened. Because that happened, this happened. It's not then this happened, then that happened, then that happened. It's not gonna keep your reader engaged as much as the because method. Uh, it's rumored that Pixar has a very common way of creating the outline of a story. And I'm gonna read you what I've read. I don't know if this is actually from Pixar, but it's rumored that it came from Pixar, all right? Once upon a time, there was blank. Every day, blank. One day, blank. Because of that, blank. And because of that, blank. Until finally, blank. And then that's the story. I love that. Go fill in those blanks and there you go. You catch you kind of a, a great little outline to get your story started with. I've heard of writers putting, you know, in act one, there's eight plot points. In act two, there's 16 plot points. In act three, there's eight plot points. And they just go and then they fill in what those plot points are. That's fine. If that's what works, then do it. After I do those things, after I answer those questions, what I like to do, and this is me, I don't know of any other writers that do this, I like to write a three to five page short story. And that short story is gonna be my novel or my screenplay. And I just make that three to five page short story as perfect as I can. I let other people read it. I let trusted friends and colleagues read it. And then after I've perfected that three to five page story, that's kind of my outline. So let's zero in on some plot points. Give me your main plot point in one sentence. In other words, what is the one main core action of your story? For example, in the notebook, Noah will pursue Allie. This is the core of the story's soul. This is what unifies the story. What is your one sentence that's going to unify your story? And then ask, what problem will your character seek to solve? Noah is going to do whatever it takes ethically to win Allie's heart. He'll even build a mansion from scratch. He will write her 365 letters, one letter every day. And the Godfather, Michael, will defeat his enemies to save his family. Wonder Woman in the year 2017. Diana, who believes in the good in humanity, will seek to destroy a god that is bent on destroying humanity.